All right, so we talked about chromatic colors. And then you've got a, a, a section of, of colors called achromatic colors. These are black, white, and gray. So remember when we were talking about chromatic colors, we had the primary, the three primary colors, which were red, yellow, and blue. Well, in achromatic colors, there are only two primary colors, black and white. Now think about that in concept. We just talked about when you mix two opposing colors together, they neutralize themselves out. But when you put them next to each other, they really, uh, they really shine. They really like are, are opposing each other and showing up. Think about in fashion, what are some of the most amazing combinations of colors to use black and white? Um, it's because they have such a stark contrast. So when you mix them together, you only get secondary colors, which would be gray. So white is a primary, black is a primary color, and these are all part of the achromatic family. When you mix black and white, you get a secondary achromatic color, widely known as gray. So these colors, these achromatic colors are literally the opposite of chromatic colors. Chromatic colors are pure tone. Achromatic colors have no tone, <laughs> essentially. They are black, white, and everything in the middle, which are gray. So it really does follow the same um, law of color, just without color. <laughs> I mean, they are color, but, you know. Okay, let's move on. All right, let's blow this up and take a deep look onto this one, because this is where things get interesting. So, like we said, um, to give any kind of depth to a combination of primary colors, you simply add black. What does that, what do I mean? Yellow, red, green, when you mix all those together, you get like a gray color. When you mix yellow, red, and blue all together, you get like a grayish brown color. Um, you, when you mix yellow, red, and black, you also get a gray. But now think about this. In theory, the amount of black you add will determine how dark the results are. Totally, totally understand that. But that also changes when it comes into contact with the hair, uh, where sometimes darker shades could look more dark, uh, like a gray brown, rather than like a pure black. And it just depends on what their natural level is. So regardless of how you use black, it will always uh, basically uh, knock back or take away from the brightness of any chromatic color and make them look a little bit flatter or duller. Um, so one thing that I, I liked to um, discuss, I have a program that I teach at our academy in Los Angeles. It's called Master of Color, and we do cover exactly what we're looking at right now. If you had to take just chromatic colors, so our red, yellow, blue, uh, violet, orange, green, you take all of those, but let's start with the primaries, our three primary colors. You've got red, yellow, and blue. What is the lightest of those primary colors? Yellow, and it shines the brightest. What is the deepest of our chromatic or primary colors? It would be blue. So you can kind of use those to also lighten or darken or anchor uh, whatever your color of choice is when you're working only with chromatic colors. But now think about it. Think if you were a chemist in a lab somewhere uh, and you had a request to make a level five red. You could take red, but how do you make red darker? If you think about just primary colors, the deepest one is blue. But if I add blue to red, what do I get? Purple, I don't get a darker red. If I added, if I wanted to make the red lighter and I was only living in a world of chromatic colors, the lightest of the three chromatic uh, primary colors is yellow. So could I add yellow to my red to make it lighter? It would make it lighter, but it wouldn't be red anymore. It would be orange. So how do I take this world of chromatic colors and lighten or darken it? you simply combine a combination of achromatic colors, whether it's white, gray, or black. So this is where things start to get interesting. We're gonna pop onto our, our next one. Let's go ahead and take a deeper look on this one because this is where things start to really come together and make sense. 
So the color grid is essentially a scale of lightness or darkness. It's really great to kind of like try and train your eyes. Um, it helps you to assess, you know, how light or dark something is uh, when it's next to something else. Uh, what's the difference between like more pure tone shades versus shades that have level or that are muted by either white, gray, or black? Um, chocolate, for example, or a medium brown chocolate is a darkened orange. So orange to mix with some kind of black to give it depth. Think about it. Orange is a secondary color. It's a combination of yellow and red. But how do I make orange darker? I can't add more red because it's just gonna go more red. I need something with lightness or darkness in order to make a color have level. So in this case, you would mix in some degree, some kind of black to the mix. The final brown shade that you get um, is a combination of your primaries, but depending on what level you're at, uh, also includes uh, some sort of achromatic color. So a fun activity, if you are somebody who teaches color theory, uh, like I do, uh, a really fun activity to get people to understand how this works would be to take, uh, you know, like flip chart paper, like a big piece of paper, group off your people, you know, two, three people, and give each group one chromatic color. This group is teal, this group is purple, this group is red, however you want to do it. So you'll give them that one tube of chromatic color and then give each table a tube of black and a tube of white paint. That could be acrylic paints you get from Michaels. The goal of this exercise is to mark out 10 squares along your flip chart paper and tell people, I want you to make your red lighter and darker utilizing white and black achromatic colors only. And it's a really fun experiment because most of the time, uh, you know, people have different approaches to how they do it. They will, you know, just they'll measure out like, oh, if I add one more drop of white to my mix, then obviously that will equal a level lighter. Uh, I, if I add, you know, specific measurements of black to my mix, it'll make my red darker, you know, as we go. The funny thing that you stumble across um, when you talk about like darker grays and blacks is that they kind of take over and that perfectly measuring out how much black you add to that red or that teal or that violet all of a sudden they're trying to get a level four and they're already at black. Um, and this also equates to um, hair color formulations as well. Um, you know, you can't mix level one and, and level five and expect to get a level three. It's pretty much gonna be darker than a level three closer to black because black takes over. The same is true for white. You really have to be careful because you could really shear out your whole entire formula or, or, or paint color or what have you and lose any depth and now all of a sudden it becomes like this you know bubblicious kind of pink instead of like a really true beautiful pastel so it's a really fun exercise to train people's eye on what to look for when you're adding depth or when you're adding lightness to a color so this is a really cool uh, chart and it's a fun activity if you're somebody who teaches color theory as well